Polymarket, the crypto protocol where a French trader beat the entire American political pundit class for tens of millions of dollars. It caused such a stir during the election that France ended up banning the platform. But even after the American presidential election, volumes on Polymarket are continuing to rise. Polymarket is a prediction market where you can bet on real life events that are happening. Even now, you can already bet on pretty much anything from TikTok being banned in the US to who's gonna win the Super Bowl. I personally profited over $14,000 in 2024 by betting on Polymarket, but whether or not you're in it for the money, I think it's extremely important to understand prediction markets like Polymarket today. In the future, I think Polymarket and prediction markets like it are going to completely revolutionize the news industry, the gambling industry, and the insurance industry. And in one of the craziest outcomes, it could become bigger than all of those combined. We are still super, super early with prediction markets, which is why it's important to understand these concepts today. By the end of this video, you're going to understand what Polymarket is, how it works, why and what parts of it are on the blockchain, and why Polymarket and prediction markets like it are the future. So first off, let's talk about what Polymarket actually is. Polymarket is a platform that tokenizes the outcomes of real world events. So let's break that down. Imagine you have $1 and one question. For example, will the moon explode in 2025? What Polymarket does is it takes that $1 and it splits it up into two components, a yes component and a no component yes the moon will explode in 2025 or no the moon will not explode in 2025. If the outcome is the same as one of these yes or no tokens then that token is redeemable back for the original dollar. So in the moon example if the moon does explode then anybody holding those yes tokens will be able to redeem it for one dollar. But if the moon exploded those no tokens become worthless. And of course the opposite is also true. If you hold a yes, the moon will explode token, but the moon doesn't explode in 2025, then that token becomes worthless. This is actually an ingenious mechanism because you know there's always money to cover that bet. There are always as many yes tokens as there are no tokens. And for every yes and no token combined, there's always $1. In fact, on Polymarket, you can mint these tokens yourself. For any event, you can supply dollars and get an equal amount of yes and no tokens. Or if you have yes and no tokens at any time, you can combine them back into a dollar, even before the event takes place. But because these yes and no tokens are independent, they can always trade at their own prices. Trading these yes or no tokens is what gives you an idea of the probability of these different events. And this is what most users are actually doing when they're using the Polymarket platform. Even while free market dynamics are allowing these yes and no tokens to trade at independent prices, logically, they should always add up to $1. This is because if the sum of the price of the yes and no token is ever trading for less than a dollar, I can just buy an equal amount of yes and no tokens and combine them to get a full dollar. The prices of the yes tokens and the no tokens tend to correspond to the actual probabilities of whether or not the event will happen. For example, in this market about whether or not the South Korean president will be arrested by January 31st, traders seem to think that there is actually a 59% chance of this happening. Okay, now we're going to get a little bit technical to talk about some of the details of how this works on chain. But don't go anywhere, it should be pretty quick. The trading of these yes and no tokens on Polymarket mostly happen by using an order book. However, if you've actually used Polygon on chain from your crypto wallet, you may have noticed that you have less transactions to sign than normal. This is because instead of trading these yes and no tokens from your wallet, what Polygon actually does is create a one of one multi-sig, which allows them to package up different transactions like token approvals and actually executing the trade so that you only have to sign one time. Because these are ERC20 tokens, if you're a developer or a super advanced crypto user, you can actually trade them directly using the smart contracts outside of this one of one multi-sig. 
But if you are using the Polymarket interface, you're using the multi-sig. Polymarket also does some fancy stuff by using a hybrid on-chain, off-chain model for their order book. Matching and ordering services are actually happening off-chain, but the execution of these trades is happening on-chain. This is to improve the user experience. The only specialized privilege that the off-chain operators have is ordering these transactions. They're not able to set prices for users or execute any trade on behalf of a user except for the limit orders that a user has already signed. Okay, now that we've gotten some of that technical stuff out of the way, let's get into a very important question with prediction markets like this. How do we actually decide if an event has or hasn't happened? You might think that it's pretty easy to determine whether or not the moon has exploded, but within any event, there is a ton of gray area. What if someone sets off some fireworks on the moon? Does that count? Or what if someone drops a nuke on the moon and blows a chunk of the moon away? When some users bet that the moon was not going to explode, they may have been thinking it was not going to explode from natural causes. But if some man-made effect caused the moon to explode, they may want their money back. This question of resolving these markets is actually one of the hardest parts of prediction markets. And it has already been the cause of controversy multiple times on Polymarket. So how does it work? Okay, here we are on the Polymarket homepage and let's go ahead and click into one of these markets. Will TikTok be banned in the US before May 2025? You may have to kind of dive into the fine print, but if you go into this rules section, you can see that there are some very specific rules around what will and will not count for the market. For example, for this market to resolve yes, a ban mandated by US law policy or the court system must have gone into effect as defined above within the above stated time frame. So if it's banned but it doesn't go into effect, this market may still resolve no. If it's banned, but then sold to another entity in a way that it comes into compliance, then this market is also resolved to no. So as you can see, it's extremely important to read the rules of every market before you place a bet. But how does Polymarket actually decide how these markets are resolved? That's where UMA comes in. Below every market in Polymarket is a resolver for UMA. UMA is something called a truth oracle, and it's a third-party blockchain protocol that Polymarket is using to resolve its markets. Let's do a quick rundown of how UMA works. When a market on Polymarket is created, an UMA resolver is created at the same time. Basically, at any time, anybody, including me and you, can post a resolution to the market. Let's just say that one of my South Korean friends called me and told me that Yoon had been arrested. I could immediately go to the UMA interface and propose a resolution to that Yoon arrested market. In order to do this, I have to post a bond of 750 USDC. This market then enters what's called a challenge period, which is a time when anybody else can come in and dispute my proposal. If there's no dispute, I get my 750 USDC back plus a five USDC reward. And that market on Polymarket ends up resolving to yes. But let's just say my friend gave me some unverified information. Somebody else with a better information source challenges my proposal. If this happens, a whole new process on UMA is triggered. Basically, there's some time given for both sides to gather all of their evidence, and then there is an anonymous vote by UMA token holders. These UMA token holders stake their UMA tokens on this vote. If they vote for a resolution that doesn't fall in line with the majority of the votes, then they can lose their stake. This actually can be a pretty controversial project because like we talked about before, even with specific rules, not all markets can be resolved so clearly. And what's more is that the resolution to these markets that might have tens of millions of dollars riding on them on Polymarket is resolved by a group of token holders of a much smaller third party token. One major example where this controversy actually happened was the Venezuelan elections. The market was based on who won the election. 
but the Venezuelan government ended up saying that Maduro won. But the opposition party and a whole host of governments outside of Venezuela claimed that the evidence that the opposition party actually won was stronger. In the end, even with Maduro remaining in power, the market resolved, in my opinion correctly, that the opposition party had actually won. The reliance on UMA as a resolution system is one reason why a lot of people are speculating that Polymarket will have an airdrop. Could be an immediate and useful use case for launching a token. Either way, I really do believe that volumes on Polymarket have the potential to 100x. Let's imagine for a second a future where Polymarket is everywhere. It was already the first place that many people went to to see the election results for the US election last November. But it can also be used by journalists to predict future results and for readers to be able to see how likely something they read is actually going to happen. For example, imagine that there's a Wall Street Journal article talking about the likelihood of a recession. While users were reading that article, they could look at the real-time probability of the recession on Polymarket. Those probabilities tend to be a lot more accurate when people are putting their money where their mouth is. And it allows readers to cut through the bullshit or individual biases of the authors of these articles. It can also be used in another way. You may have seen some of the California fires happening around Los Angeles. Insurance companies for years have been cutting wildfire insurance all over California. But imagine that there was a poly market, market that you could use that actually allowed you to hedge against the risk of a fire happening in your city. This does come with some important considerations, which is whether or not that the existence of a market can actually influence the results. Like if there's a market where the event is whether or not a big fire will happen in San Francisco, what's stopping somebody from betting on that market and then going out and setting the fire themselves. In addition to insurance and news, gambling is a massive industry in the United States that has only been growing bigger. The thing is, these gambling companies like FanDuel and DraftKings are raking in billions and billions of dollars in profit that's coming directly out of the pockets of their users. Polymarket is completely peer-to-peer -peer, and as of right now, doesn't even take any fees. I've gone and compared the polymarket odds to the odds at my local sportsbook for things like who's going to win the Super Bowl, and the polymarket odds are much, much better for gamblers. Overall, polymarket definitely has the potential to change the way the world works in the next few years. If you want more polymarket alpha, I tweet threads on Twitter about it sometimes. And if you follow me, you'll be in good company because some of my tweets have even been liked by Vitalik himself. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.